Jeff, uh, you know, I guess this is probably your fourth year co uh, coaching against him in some form, but um, what what makes Chris like such an effective score and such a, I guess, difficult guy to kind of plan for and uh, match up against? You know, I think he's as dynamic of a guard as there is in college basketball. Um, he is uh, fast and quick, both. Um, he has a really, really good handle. Uh, he can shoot it. He can shoot it with range. He can shoot it off the bounce. Uh, he can get to the basket. You know, he knows how to draw fouls. Um, he's dynamic in transition. Um, I just think it, I think his speed and then his ability to change speeds um, and his ability to shoot the basketball, I think that's, that's what makes him elite. And he's elite. He's, he's, you know, when he's right and he's healthy and he's going, there's, there's not a better guard in college basketball. How a special does a guy have to be, um, you, you know, to do what he does e, uh, e in the ACC and be 5'7", you know, and still be able to do all of that? Yeah, you know, I think if you look at the history of our league um, and you look at the small guys that have been – successful like they are special whether you're looking at Muggsy Bold, Spud Webb if you look at the history deep back then at least from, you know, from as far as I know it uh, there was a guy that uh, uh, played at Clemson named Terrell McIntyre was about 5'9 that was really really good um, you know the thing that I think all of them have in common is 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 their speed all of them are really really super super competitive uh, they can change the game defensively. I think that's the thing about Chris that I think goes uh, underrated because of the amount of minutes that he has to play. He can't do it as often, but he has the ability to completely change a game defensively um, because he can play at your feet. He can pick up full court, and he can be such a uh, – he can, he can disrupt so much stuff. Um, and so I think you have to be that. Usually, you know, those guys, they have a chip on their shoulder. They're incredibly competitive. They're, they're very, very confident. And uh, Chris embodies all of that. Jeff, what's the challenge for freshmen heading into conference play? And is there anything you can really do to prepare them for what they're about to face? You know, you can try to do some things in practice. You can talk about it. But the intensity level uh, ramps up, you know, the – the talent ramps up, the coaching ramps up, they know your stuff, they, you know, have a little bit of an idea of, of your program, they've coached against you before, some of the players have played against guys, and so there's a familiarity that's there that's not there with the with a non-conference opponent, and so it's different. Um, normally, if, if, if you have guys that are older that can talk to the guys, um, you know, the new guys about what to expect, but still you, you don't fully grasp it until you're out there doing it. Now that you've had a, a road game, um, do you think the process of traveling to Miami on Wednesday will be a little easier, comfortable, anything like that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know if anything's comfortable right now. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We're going to better weather, I think. So that, that's probably good, although we can't enjoy it. Jeff, speaking of the freshmen, is it easier for the freshmen going to the conference play with nobody in the building because of road games? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's it's odd. I don't know if it's easier. It's it's odd. It's uh, it, it's still weird. Um, I think down at Miami, I think we can have. I think I think we get forty tickets. So I'm assuming with that, there will be some people in the building. Um, but I, I don't know if it's easier. I, I don't know. Jeff, uh, Ephiel went off against Northern Illinois, but he's, he's gone 0 for 8 from three-pointers since. What have you seen in just things that he needs to improve on and how he's responded to those rough performances and the practices since then? Yeah, you know, he's just got to be confident and take good shots. If he takes good shots, we live with the results. Um, if he takes a difficult shot or he hunts because he's pressing, then that's something we'll tell him about. We believe in him. We need him. Um, and we've just tried to continue to encourage him. Coach, there were some times against Gardner-Webb and uh, against Northwestern where you put, you know, 
uh, Will and, and Femi on the court at the same time, you had a much taller lineup, you know, smallest guy, probably six five or so. What, what are some of the advantages of playing with a, a bigger lineup and a longer lineup? Yeah, you know, the length, some of the things you can do defensively, you can contest shots, you can uh, uh, maybe make up for someone's mistakes or miscue or uh, a miscommunication. Um, it gives us the ability to do that. You can do some different things as far as switching. Um, if you have like size guys, uh, you, you, you can take up more space. Hopefully it helps, it affects and helps your rebounding in a positive way. You know, we're, we're still a team that's trying to, to figure things out. You know, we're five games in, you know, I still think we can get better. Um, I know we can get better. We just have to have to have to have the right mindset every day. And um, we have to show up with the right mindset and the right spirit uh, to compete every day to get better. Coach, after seeing your team in action for five games now, how do you think Nike Sabande would fit into this offense and what missing pieces would he provide to this team right now? Well, he'd be really good for us. Um, number one, he, he, he provides experience. You know, he's, he's played on the collegiate level for three years. Um, he's, he's been a really good scorer at this level. When you score 1,500 points in three years, that's, that's impressive. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's very athletic. Uh, you know, in practice, he's, he's made shots in three years. I think in Miami, Ohio, I think he's made 175 threes. You know, that's, that's more than anyone that we have. And so he, we, we think that he could help us there. But just, you know, continue to add more experience perimeter depth. Jeff, you talked about how he sent you the smiley face emoji with, you know, the article that said that the waiver was going to go in this Wednesday. Uh, is, that, is, there a, is there a thought process or a plan for to use him on Wednesday if, if you're allowed or how soon he'll be worked into the full game plan? Yeah, if, if, we're, if, if he's cleared, he'll play right away. I don't know the timetable of anything. I don't, I don't know anything. I mean, I know Coach Laranega, uh, you know, made some comments. He has a kid in a similar situation as Nike, a kid from Stony Brook uh, that's in a similar situation. I know he made some comments, I think, Saturday after their game about how ridiculous it is that they're waiting. And uh, I think he made a comment that it won't be decided maybe until 5 o'clock and we play at 6 you know, hopefully that's not the case. You know, hopefully that, you know, that morning, I mean, I would have liked for it to have been today, <laughs> you know, just to make a decision because you have some kids around the country that maybe could play today, maybe could play tomorrow um, if they went on ahead and made the decision. Jeff, you mentioned Saturday night that your guys were at the end of an energy cycle. How did they bounce back at practice today? They were better. They were better today. We were rested. Um, had a good day. Jeff, they, Miami's played a few games without likes. And uh, so what have you seen from Isaiah Wong kind of taking on more of a, a, you know, lead guard role in those couple games? Yeah, he's made a big jump. I mean, a big, big jump. Uh, he was a talented kid out of high school. Uh, started to play really, really well for him last year towards the end of the year. You know, they've been banged up. Miami has. I mean, if you look at their last game, obviously Chris was out. Um, Augusty got hurt and, and missed most of the game. Um, you know, one of the better freshmen in the country, Earl Clark, has been out. I don't know what his status is. Wardenberg is out for the year. And so they've, they've, they've been really, really banged up. But I've been impressed with, with, with how they've responded, especially with Chris being out. And a big reason is what Isaiah Wong has done. Um, he can really score the ball. He's very confident. Uh, he puts pressure on your defense with his ability to drive and create off the bounce. He's creative. And he just has a scorer's mentality. And so, you know, they're a really good team. You know, they, they were down. One of the most impressive wins I've seen is what they did against Purdue when they were down. And to do that without Chris, to be down 20 and to come back and to win that basketball game speaks to the pride that those kids have uh, in their program. Jeff, it's obviously really early, uh, early here, but based on – what you've seen so far and based on what team on what on what various teams had coming back um what, what do you generally make of of uh, of the ACC this year as far as its overall strength its depth you know do you think it's better than it was last year or compared to, you know or, or how it compares to how it i guess traditionally is you know that's hard for me to answer because i haven't really watched 
all the teams in, in great depth um, because I've been so worried about us. Um, so I don't really know. I know what the final end thing ended up being in the uh, ACC Big Ten Challenge, and that was without NC State and Louisville. I know those in Virginia didn't play. I know – I think those are three of our better teams. I think NC State has a chance to be really good this year. Um, obviously, we know uh, Virginia is one of the better teams in the country. So, I don't know. Again, I haven't seen everyone in great depth to be able to give you um, an educated answer. I would just be throwing stuff at the wind. I don't like to do that. Jeff, there's been a lot of – games where we've seen in the early non-conference where teams have been upset by teams you normally wouldn't see them be upset by um, obviously happened to you guys as well is that something that you expect to continue as we get into conference play or do you think that'll be different as teams start to maybe find themselves a little bit well I think early you know I think everyone's trying to figure it out I think when you don't have exhibitions or scrimmages or whatever you know that's difficult it, it, I mean, it really, really is because no matter how good you think you are, what you're doing in practice is just against each other. And so there's still this big unknown. I think as you watch, I think teams are starting to maybe get an identity. But, you know, it's still, I don't think there's much of a home court advantage anymore this year. Um, you know, because most places do have no fans. And so maybe it's a, advantage as far as you're comfortable you you practice there every day or you shoot in the gym or you don't have to travel but it's not like it is during a normal game where you have the crowd and you have all of that so it's just it, it's it's still such an odd environment it it, it, it really really is and um, I think you can see anything this year I, I really and truly do I, I don't you know you don't know who's going to be healthy you know, you don't know who's going to be able to play. You don't – it's a lot of those unknowns you don't know. And then I, I'm a big thing, what, what's going on with these kids' mental health? You know, w w one of the reasons on, on, on our game Saturday, and I didn't know this. I, I suspected it, but I didn't know it. Um, uh, Audi seemed off. Like he wasn't himself, how he has been. And, and I found out he's actually really good friends with Keontae Johnson. And so what was going on there in the heavy heart that he felt, we said a prayer for him right after the game, um, you know, as a team. But, you know, these kids are going through a lot, man. They are. They are going through a lot. And what happened to one of their temporaries on Saturday scared them. And, you know, we continue to pray for Keontae and his family and their program and things like that. So I think – Alan, to answer, like, it's just, it's so many unknowns. And so I, I, I think you can see anything this year. Coach, we heard Coach K make some comments about, you know, kind of playing right now, similar to what we heard from you last week. Are those conversations you've had with him? And what do you make of the assertions some have answered with that those comments are only coming because of some of the struggles his team has had on the court? Well, I think that's ludicrous. I, I think that's absolutely ridiculous to say that you know, to the person or about the person that's won more games in the history of bas college basketball than anyone. So I don't think losing a couple of games this year is, is, is going to affect him. Um, that has won more nas national championships than any active coach. Uh, that has, has done more for the game. Look, one of the things that, that sucks for coach is because of how much he's won in his stature, he takes bullets. Like, he, he's an easy guy to take shots at. And for me, I get really upset by it because of how much I care about him. But also, with working with him for seven years, I know how much he does for the game, and I know how much he does for coaches. Like, I've seen it. And the one coach in particular that made a comment, it was interesting because I know exactly what coach did for him. Like, I, I know it because I was the one that helped facilitate it. And so it's, it's disappointing. 
you know, it's, it's something as, as a young coach myself, you know, there's a certain reverence that you have for whether it's, you know, Coach Beheim, Coach Izzo, you know, Coach Roy Williams, you know, like, like Mark Few. I mean, it's, it's guys that have done stuff that none of us have done. You know, that there's a certain respect level that should be there, like it was for Coach Smith back in the day, like it was for Coach Thompson, you know, and guys like that. And it's just disappointing. But, you know, I talked to him the night before he made the comment. You know, I, I think the thing that, 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 that bothered me the most he was asked a question after the game about me, about my comment. That's what spurred his comment. And the night before, he called me to tell me what I said was right, what he thought I said was right. And he was proud of me for stepping out and saying that. And he said to me, you know, I hope we win tomorrow. More than anything, because I want our guys and, and things like that. But I'd like to say something. And I know if we lose and I say it, I'm going to get killed. <laughs> and it's just, again, someone asked him a question just like you asked me. They asked him about my comments. And he said what he said. Now, he's been saying it for a while. <laughs> and then everyone wants to twist. But that's what happens when you're the best. When you're the guy. Jay-Z has a great song. I, Mostly everything that happens, I have something with, with a Jay-Z song or lyric that, or musical or, or song that can go to it. There's a song by Jay-Z called Most Kings. Research it. Look at the lyrics. I sent it to Coach when I worked for him, and I told him, this is you. This song is about you. So that's what I think. So, all right, guys. I appreciate it. See you.